small mammals play a really critical role in forest regeneration. Like humans, animals have personalities, so we have bold individuals, shyer individuals, more aggressive individuals, and this, it's the same for, for animals. So there's shyer mice, more aggressive mice, more curious mice, more active mice. It's important to have a lot of diversity in populations in order for them to be healthy. So a population that has animals with all the same behavioral type, it's not going to be as able to withstand change as a population of animals with all sorts of behavioral types because a bold mouse, it might have advantages in some instances, but a shy mouse might also have advantages in some circumstances. So it's important to have that diversity. Humans influence animals, you know, when we clear forests, when we urbanize. Um, but we may not be affecting all of the animals the same way. The small mammals like to move when it's raining because predators can't hear their feet scurrying around as easily. And we're looking at whether by modifying the environment we're actually giving an advantage to certain type of individuals so we are somehow modifying the course of evolution and advantaging certain personality traits compared to, to others. This is a woodland jumping mouse. So we use three different uh, behavioral tests right now to help us gauge personality. So uh, the first is called an open field test. It's used to measure an individual's response to a novel environment. The second test is called an emergence test. It lets us see who the bold individuals are. And then the last test is called a handling bag test. Um, so basically it measures stress response and then I can eventually look and see how personality influences body condition, survival, and how land use change all plays into it. So depending on the type of forest treatment, animals are either advantaged or disadvantaged. People think, who cares about small mammals? You know, they're, they're not important species, but because their job in the ecosystem is to eat seeds and disperse them, they can really harvest up to every seed. For example, we're finding that they really do not like paper birch, they do not like balsam fir. I've seen squirrels spitting seeds of balsam fir because they don't like them. And I'm not surprised that balsam fir, paper birch are the most common species in regenerating forests. So they can really have a very substantial role on the composition of the forest. Basically, an animal passes through this area, they go in here and start eating whatever seeds I have. It'll read the pit tag and then these two cameras will show me what they're doing so I can see like what sort of decisions that they make and how long it takes them to make those choices. I'm giving them different size and weight options. So they all taste the same, they smell the same, they're the same shape. The only thing that's different is their size. So I'm looking to see how different individuals make different choices based on the size of the seeds and the weight of the seeds because obviously you know bigger seeds they give you more resources you know they're better to a point because you've got to lug that big thing away and you can't be vigilant during that time and then there's a cost to even spending the energy to disperse that seed um, so I want to see whether or not uh, personality sort of plays into this this choice whether or not um, the bolder, more active individuals are the ones who decide to go for that big seed um, versus the smaller seed. In the long term, if we want to manage viable populations, we need to also start looking at things such as the variation of personalities. If we want these populations to be able to adapt to the changes in climate, land use change of the future, we need to preserve this variation in uh, behavior.